the bartender, the chef's friend. There has long been a happy symbiotic relationship between kitchen and bar. Simply put, the kitchen wants booze and the bartender wants food. The bartender, seeing himself rightly as a more exalted creature than the waiters, would like to eat a little better than the employee gruel hoarding under the heat lamps between four and five. By the end of his shift, he is hungry and chicken legs and day-old pasta don't fit with the bartender's image of himself as a showman and a personality. He wants to be treated as special, and he usually is. The chef wants to drink anything he desires, anytime he wants it, without upper management being fully informed of the extent of his alcoholism or his taste for premium liquors. And the bartender is usually happy to help, if handled correctly. The bartender, being the guy every employee grips to at one point or another, is also useful for gathering interesting tidbits of intelligence. He is also privy at times to the high-level maneuverings of upper management and ownership. He knows, in dollars, how well or how poorly the place did on a given night. He is getting petty cash payouts and for what purpose? And he is heard plenty. Everyone, sooner or later, forgets that the bartender is not really a doctor or a priest and obliged to keep confidences. They forget that, yes, he is listening while you bitch about the boss to a friend at the far end of his bar. Hopefully, he's going to tell the chef all about it. Earlier, I rashly implied that all bartenders are thieves. This is not entirely accurate, though, of all restaurant workers, it's the bartender who has the greatest and the most varied opportunities. The bartenders control the register. They can collude with waiters on dinner checks. They can sell drinks out of their own bottles. I have even heard of a bartender who brought in his own register, ringing a third of the drinks there and simply carrying the whole thing home at night. But the most common bartender hustle is simply the buyback when he gives out free drinks every second or third round to an appreciative customer. If you are drinking single malt all night long and only paying for half of them, that's a significant saving. An extra 10 or $20 tip to the generous barkeep is still a bargain. This kind of freewheeling with a house liquor is also personally good for the bartender. It inspires that most valued phenomenon in a regular bar crowd of following folks who will actually follow you wherever you work. Chefs naturally love this kind of bartender and as a rule will not drink anywhere where there isn't this kind of trade discount. After work, poses of chefs and cooks will bounce from bar to bar on a loose, rotating basis, taking full advantage of the liberal pouring policies of bartenders they know from working with them before. They are careful not to burn their favourites hitting their bar too hard or too often, which is why they tend to move from place to place. The bartender is repaid when he swings by their restaurants with a dinner date and gets treated like a pasha. Free snackies, maybe some free desserts, a visit from the chef, fawning, personal service, in short, the kind of warm welcome and name recognition all of us beaten down. Working class slobs crave when going out to dinner.